Hi everyone. I hope you're all doing okay. I'm going to play a video. It's seven minutes and some odd seconds long. If you can get through it. Um, and it pertains to the change that I mentioned in a video a couple of days ago. What has been happening here? I have seen a change in people's behavior where they literally do not care. They do things and say things that anyone would know would hurt, shame, cause consequences for somebody that are not good consequences, lie about people, gossip about people with no evidence, but it's the kind of gossip that really can destroy people's reputations. Um, but the people who work at this apartment complex, I've never lived in a place like this. I've never encountered the kind of disrespect, the lying that goes on by the employees here. It's really, it's gotten to the point where it has created far more stress than I needed. And anyway, um, I'll get back to you after the video.
is what I have listened to for the last three days. Friday was okay. The guy that was working in the apartment right next door was gone. So I didn't have to listen to any of these, this stuff that he's doing in this apartment. But this is what, I, and I am not kidding, all day long, what I listen to. I included that last clip of the apartment that they're working on and showed my window. That's how close the apartment is. So those fans are putting out all of the toxic varnish um, smell. And it's in my apartment. comes into my window. Outside it's even worse because the fans are directing it outside. And I am chemically sensitive. A gift from Big Pharma. Medications put on the market, adverse effect, chemical sensitivity. And did you know that those who are chemically sensitive are more likely to be electromagnetically sensitive? That was a big wow. But now, people who have perfume on, they come close to me, it feels like I'm being smashed in the face. I end up getting headaches, my eyes hurt, my nose hurts. One neighbor, I keep asking her, please don't come in when you're wearing that perfume. So my door is open. I'm living in a box. I'm living how I never lived before. I need light, I need air, I don't like air, I hate air conditioning, always have. I need cross ventilation, I don't have it. That would be a big plus with all of these toxic smells. 
my one peaceful day tomorrow, those fans are going to be blowing that stuff out. Monday, the polyurethane. The polyurethane will leach into my apartment, and it will be here for weeks. I'm not kidding. How do I know? I have a neighbor who lived next door to an apartment that, they, that these maintenance people were working on. They polyurethane the floor. It was there for weeks. Now, she just sits in her apartment and no problem. I could only be there for a few minutes. I get sick. I, I feel nauseous. My eyes are killing me right now. My nose is burning up. My throat is sore. And this is how I have to live. Ain't it special? No, it's really not. The polyurethane, I know, is going to sink me. Now, understand. I don't have any resources. I have nowhere to go. I have no money. I ain't got squat. So I'm stuck here. The noise. Ever since having so many adverse effects of these medications I was on, I got sensitive to noise. Now, look, I grew up in New York. It was noisy. It never bothered me. Walked into restaurants, incredibly noisy, never bothered me. I started, I'd go into restaurants after being on these medications. I couldn't block out the background noise. You know, the, uh, the bus station, the putting down the dirty dishes, the silverware, I couldn't block it out. And I stopped going to restaurants. That's why I loved dinner parties and inviting people over for dinner. Um, but the constant noise here, no kidding, started in March, early March, every single day for hours on end. Neighbors are upset. My tenants that I've talked to. I came upon a conversation that tenants were having about the noise. I said, if we're all upset about this, why don't we go to Holly and, you know, demand that that company get back, come back, because this is, this has destroyed any peace and quiet. Um, about a month ago, oh, they said they wouldn't. <laughs> Essentially what they were saying, they didn't use this word, but they said, we'll be retaliated against. Now, I've grown up in apartments. When something was wrong, uh, you know, you didn't get retaliated against. I said, so, you're afraid to complain about anything because you fear getting retaliated against. And they both agreed, yeah. This is what's killing us. We don't need the elite to destroy us. We're destroying one another. We're destroying one another with, oh, I can't. I've got to go along to get along. We're destroying one another with our lack of care. And I am seeing that now across the board. No care. People are saying things that they should know is crazy. People are lying and they don't care. The maintenance guys, the property manager here, twisted, sick little group of liars. And I have said for a while to other tenants, I am sure that this is going on because they don't care about the tenants and they can always get more tenants. They can't always get these illegal immigrants to work for like nothing and everything's about money here new owner stepped in and increased rent increased the laundry you know how much it costs to do laundry the laundry room another tenant a couple of nights ago her husband said we're turning ghetto Everything is 
we saw the mulch bags all over the place. There since before Father's Day. They start something, they don't complete it. They don't get back to it. Do they not see the mulch bags? I guess not. Nobody does anything. No matter how. They're in front of people's apartments like that. They start working on an apartment. They leave all of their crap around. I come out of my car. This is what I have to look at, which you saw. So a couple of days ago, I hear from a tenant. She had this conversation with Holly, the property manager, who is in the office maybe a couple of hours. She was gone for months. Had a stroke, but that's questionable. Is she lying about that? A tenant went to see her in the hospital. She was nowhere to be found. The maintenance guy tells a tenant she is lying and faking her symptoms. This is what I'm living? Are you kidding? I called because the kitchen light was flickering. Holly is talking like she's drunk. She can't. I'll do the no, A couple of days later, I called Holly. Jose, one of the maintenance guys, comes over to work in this apartment right next door to me. He's got his radio right smack below my window. And some Mexican music is great, some is really tangy, and I asked him if he could turn it down. This was his response. What? The radio? No! No! Wow. Okay. This is new. Uh, and whether somebody's a maintenance guy or I don't care what position, this is not how you treat people. I picked up the phone, called Holly, and I started saying, Holly, I cannot take this. I cannot take this. Um, she interrupted me and said, did you get the notice? Talking completely fine. Oh, miraculous recovery in a couple of days. Now you're talking fun. I said, what notice? Your notice of eviction. What? I'm a good tenant. Pay my rent on time. I'm quiet. I'm clean. I'm friendly. I'm, uh, I'm helpful to the neighbors. Notice of eviction. I complained about the noise. I got retaliated against. What did I do? I, I called. I left her message. And this was a while ago maybe about a month ago. I was going out of my mind. I said, we can't live like this every single day. But what was also happening was Jose was going back and forth, back and forth, looking in my window, smiling when he caught my eye. I'm out there with a neighbor one day and he's going back and forth, back and forth. He's not working where he's going. He's just turning around, coming back. Every time he catches my eye, he smiles. I finally lost it. I said, you know, what the hell are you doing? But the neighbor had said, what is he doing? He's not even working down there. He was doing it. Well, a neighbor told me they were doing it to annoy me. Great. I have to live this. But I... I did tell, tell Holly that he was looking in the apartment. She doesn't believe me. The maintenance guy, she believes. This is not anything I've ever lived. That's stressful enough. The disrespect is really stressful. And then you get a notice of eviction. Now, I don't know South Carolina law. I don't think it's proper uh, delivery. I think you need a sheriff to that's how you do it up north. Okay. She just put this in the mail. But listen to the reason. Interference with maintenance work. Oh, really? I interfered with maintenance work. How did I do that? What did I do? I didn't, I've never interfered with the maintenance work. Did I run out and push Jose off the lawnmower and drive it into a lake? They lie and profanity.
I said, shit to Holly. She's a good Christian woman. I also call Bernardo a fucking liar, because he is. And he lied about someone, and I hate when people lie about other people when they're not there to defend themselves. And that was over the feral cat situation, and it's nuts here. You know, first you hear from the property manager, a neighbor told me, she said it was okay to feed the cats. The maintenance guys also act as spies. Jose sees this neighbor feeding the cats. Holly, she's feeding the cats. What does Holly do? Call that neighbor who she told it was okay to feed the cats and said, stop feeding the cats. It's like everybody's schizophrenic here or something. So, feral cat issue, and I see Bernardo closing up one window well to a building where he knows kittens are. I said, Bernardo, you can't do that. You you can't close up the window well unless you know all of the cats are out. He did it again the next day. Twice I had to open it, and I see one kitten come out, the other kitten probably couldn't get back in, so it was underneath a, another window well, but it was only that window well. Most of the window wells here into the basement of the buildings are open. Why are you just closing that one? And it began to dawn on me, this guy is actually doing it purposely. Now, you kill a kitten underneath the building, you're going to have an awful lot of smell. No one, it, it's like The abject insanity, I don't, this is, I don't know how to operate in this world anymore. People doing things and saying things. It doesn't make sense, or it's a complete and utter lie, or it's like a, a twisted version of their recollection. How do you, how do you manifest a healthy community if this is the behavior? We do not need the elite to bring us down. We're bringing one another down. Then he tries to shut up another window well, close off, knowing there were kittens there. I see this other neighbor walk out with him. I go out. Oh, the lie happened before that. So. He's putting the feral cat responsibility on me. I'm the tenant. Now, I did say when the issue came up, and then it's dropped and nobody cares about anything. It's bizarre. But the first time it was an issue, I said, I know somebody who traps, spays, neuters. I'll have her call Holly. She called Holly. Holly never called her back. And then Bernardo. When I said this woman called, Holly never called her back. He looks down at the ground and says, oh, she did. I was in the office when she did. Abject lie. I said, you are a fucking liar, and we're not going to get anywhere with you lying. Prior to that, I asked him. I saw animal control here. He was talking to you. Nothing happened. I was fine with that because the shelter here became a no-kill. And what they do is trap get them spayed and neutered, and release them in the same area. Nothing happened. There's no follow-up with anything. It's not a problem for months until it becomes a problem again. So, I get this notice of eviction. I'm like, I, I, I'm like, okay. Now, I have no place to go. I have no resources. You know, I see the comments. Relax, take a couple of days off, do something, you know, that brings you joy. All of that was gone in 2012. For those who don't know what happened to my life, suffice it to say, I am the scapegoat of a severely malignant, narcissistic mother. The severity, you don't, everybody gets affected. I think I escaped the pathology of narcissism simply because I was assigned the scapegoat role. My older sister and brother 
became pathological narcissists. They've been out to destroy me. 16 years I've been fighting both fights, trying to stay alive. I had a stroke. I needed hands-on help. The help I got from my family was we're going to make sure you never succeed again and we want you dead. Now when people hear that they go, oh, come on, you're exaggerating. Those who are in the socially acceptable dysfunctional bell curve, you're the majority. Majority manifests the reality in your society. Hence the reason why we have a really dysfunctional, deeply disturbed society. Because we consider the well-adjusted in that bell curve. Well-adjusted. And they are nuts. But their dysfunction growing up, it didn't threaten their life. Dysfunctions on a continuum, so is narcissism. On either extreme, outside the bell curve, you got healthy and you got abuse, neglect that is severe. I'm outside the bell curve. I've done a tremendous amount of work to be just like you guys in the bell curve. Normal. Um, I did do a lot of work, but I had to end my practice in 2002. And some people say, oh, narcissists, they soften with age. Not everyone. Some get even more vicious, and that's my mother. Um, everything was about making sure I never get back up on my feet. 16 years I've been doing this, and I didn't get back on my feet. I'm still alive, which I'm sure pisses them off, but when I've said my life was destroyed, I don't think a whole lot understood what I meant. I don't have resources for joy anymore. 2012, the grand finale manipulation of my mother's got me homeless. She involved a professional, her flying monkey, my brother, and I landed in my car driving around the eastern half of the country. Now, when you see a woman, middle-aged, she was an attorney, sober, no drugs, doesn't drink, nothing, still posting on YouTube, still doing the research, and she's driving around the country you can pretty much assume she has nowhere to go and she doesn't know what she's doing. There's something wrong. Something wrong. Well, there's been something wrong since 2002. And I've been fighting to get my life back. I've been fighting to stave off more losses. The cognitive issues that I've had I needed hands-on help. I didn't get it. All right, so from 2012 on, I'm going here, there, everywhere, staying with you know, strangers, essentially, subscribers. And I got to know that most Americans are really messed up. And most of the experiences that I had were some traumatizing, terrifying, played, lied about, publicly humiliated with people posting videos, lied to, and last year I had an experience that left me really traumatized, but I have no resources to work with. You don't know what you got until it's gone. I had so much in Great Barrington. If I had an experience or something that pulled me down, I had access to so many things to get me back up, and I used them. And I lost all of that. So you end up in an area you don't know, no one knows you, 
some people look at you like, what, what are you doing here? You don't want to even be asked that question because you don't even know how to answer it. You can't relate to anybody here. No, my life was not about discussing my favorite spam recipe and talking about my favorite, my 600 pound life. My life was very different. And when you have no choice, when that's been taken away from you, you don't have any money. You can't even distract yourself. You can't. This year has been the hardest year. There are reasons why I hung on. Don't want to get into that. But I don't know what the hell has gone on with the American people, but something has. Now, maybe people, this is how they act down here. I don't know. The disrespect that I have received from people around here, the lying that I have heard, the, I don't give a shit what I do. I'm not affected by what I do or say. And I don't care that you are. Two tenants here. Two women. Didn't like a guy. Two months they worked to get him evicted based on lies. And it worked. I went to him. I said, I will go with you. I'll, you know, stand up for you or whatever. He just wanted to get out of here. So many people can't stand living here now. Two tenants left, they had the resources. Other tenants, they don't have the resources. They hate it living here now. Go and get out. And with property managers, maintenance, I don't give a shit. It's like, oh, wow, okay. Did I tell you that another neighbor or tenant was talking to another woman? I walked over. What are they talking about? Holly, the property manager that nobody can even stand and she said she was in a conversation with Holly who decided to make an appearance for like an hour and a half one morning she's never around she said she, that they had a short conversation and several times Holly lied in that conversation she would be talking about something and then return to it later on and it was like she would say something completely opposite but she also said to that tenant and she said this to a tenant people are complaining about the noise I don't care I can always get more tenants so what I have been sensing was right she doesn't care about the tenants doesn't care that she's destroyed the peace and quiet she's just gonna do whatever the hell she wants to do she doesn't live here. She doesn't have to put up with it. And anybody who complains gets evicted. This is where I live. This is what I live. So I need a co-signer. I can't sign for a lease. The woman who co-signed, um, I told her. She spoke to Holly. Holly told her I got evicted for feeding the cats. Nowhere on the notice does it say feeding the cats. What? People have lost their minds. Or we've just entered this world of I'll say whatever I want, I'll do whatever I want. People don't like it, too bad. The the rapidity with which I am seeing care gone in people it's pretty frightening actually because we'll get nowhere and who's going to survive with this kind of when Americans are treating one another like this I'm not we're at war guys people go down I'm going down you know with all of this noise now, my basic functioning has even lessened even greater. I mean, I'm posting. People think I'm fun. No. Now, understand this. This has been my entire adult life. Researching and communicating back what I've learned, 
either writing or communicating it verbally. People have said, well, you're still better than average. I don't compare myself to other people. I compare myself to me. And it's frightening to see how my abilities are lessening. Um, but in part, it's because of how people treat one another. You know, I spoke to the kid who revs his Mustang. He would get in the car. He'd let it idle for a long time. He'd get in the car, rev it, rev it, rev it. Then he'd pull out and rev it right out, revving it all the way out to East West Parkway, and then really gun it. And I'd hear him go down East West Parkway, which is a ways away from where my apartment is. I spoke to him. And I said, first, why do you guys have to drive these Mustangs with these modified? I didn't modify it. I bought it that way. But you bought it that way because you wanted that. He said, I'm young. OK. I asked him not to rev it. I said, can you just try to get out of the, this driveway? Because other neighbors were really upset about it. I have five Mustangs here. They're all doing the same thing. But, no, they're not sitting revving. But they, they're so incredibly loud. He stopped the revving. That shows a respect. And so now when he gets in his car, yeah, it's loud. But I don't have any animosity toward him. In fact, I want to go to him and say thank you. It's a respect. There's a mutual respect now. And it lessens a lot of the tension due to the cause of that tension. You're not experiencing that. When you have people who so don't care about you, they keep doing what you know, what they know upsets you, and they do nothing to stop it. That shows a lack of care and a disrespect that, well, when you have friends doing this, and it goes on and on and on and on, you get, okay, it's deliberate. They may not be aware because they don't have awareness of their own issues. But when you keep telling somebody, please don't do this, and then they do it the next day, And that goes on, and on, and on, and on. There is something in them that they're doing it purposely to show you how much they don't care. Now, you're going to do that to somebody you know has no resources, has nothing to work with to try to lift themselves up, except whatever's inside. You know. They have no one to go to. They have no one that they can relate to. I have one friend that I see like every two months. We talk for a couple of hours. But I got to the point where having had so many experiences with subscribers that the ripple effect of this kind of behavior, uh-uh. I, I realized that there's a part of me that now is shut down. I am not going to get close to anybody because I've experienced too many people who work to destroy you because they can't look at themselves. So all you want is for they lie, you ask them, could you just not lie? but they have to deny that they lied. Two years later they say, okay, I lied. But they've lied and lied and lied and it, it's crazy. But when you're doing this to somebody that you know has been destroyed by lies, you say, oh, you love them and they're your precious, precious friend, but you can't stop lying? Well, you're not a friend. 
and you're just one of those socially acceptable bell curvers who never work on yourself. You are comfortable. You, you haven't lost anything. You have your life. You go on fine. But what you've done to other people, you don't even care about them. This is not okay behavior. This is not okay behavior. So, when you see an awful lot of people behaving this way, we ain't getting anywhere. I've been saying for six years, the individual in the aggregate needs to work on themselves. This nightmare that has manifested has manifested because people in this country are out of their friggin' minds. And they won't do anything to work on the issues that they've got in childhood and they just continue to fling them around but they don't care they're comfortable they've got their home and they've got an awful lot to distract themselves with um, and hell you know there's more people discard discard you know we treat one another like cattle the elite destroying us they don't care about us our lives are just these meaningless things to them. I have found Americans treat one another like that. So, and I could go on and on and on about issues and how they are absolutely connected to this bigger picture. So what has this done to me? It has left me feeling well, forget about my individual stuff at the core. I'm unwanted. I've been erased by my family. I don't exist. I don't exist. I can't go back to that liberal progressive social network. I grew too quickly. I've grown away from them. I've grown out of the matrix. You don't come from that and then switch over to the Southern Republican. You don't. And I got stuck in an area that nothing's familiar. I don't have access to anything, anything that resembles anything that I had up north. You don't just recreate a life, you know, with a few donations. <laughs> and you don't, there's, in an area that has nothing for you. And, yeah, you tell this to people, they judge you, they claim you're lazy, they claim you're this, you want to be taken care of. You don't go to law school if you're lazy. If you knew what I have done doing a 180 on my life and all the work that I have done to accomplish what I accomplished, well, I guess you don't care about that. Um, presumptions, it's a fact, you're this. You don't even know me. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. People don't believe one another. You know, you, you want trust. You want people to take trust seriously. No one does. No one does. AA used to be the place that I would go. And I would share, I would feel better. That stopped working for me. My life got so radically different that the times that I would try, I got that I wasn't believed with what I was saying. And people shut you up. You know, I don't have a family because I was drunk. No, that's not true. Um, I didn't do it. I, I've hardly even seen my family throughout my entire adult life. My mother. I think I, the last time I saw her, 1999. My sister, years before that. What could I have done to these people? But, considering everything that I did, you don't suddenly become a completely different person and say, okay, now I want somebody to fix me or um, take care of me. 
16 years. Do you think I would have done this for 16 years? That's really sick. 16 years. So, I'm hardwired for stress. But not, not the kind I've been enduring for years. And it has had a big, big effect on me. So, they don't care about the health of their tenants. They don't care about the peace and quiet. They don't care about anything. This is what I learned about stress. And I'll link below. All right. First, this was interesting. From noise and stress, a comprehensive, comprehensive approach. And it's 1981. Environmental Health Perspectives Journal. Um, but it says, and I was really struck by this, sound stimuli also influence the other sensory systems. Now, I had a thalamic stroke. It is the relay for sensory information. Not smell, but taste and touch and hearing and vision. It's also crucial in short-term memory. It's also crucial in the higher order thinking and decision making. I'm driving around the country. That was a clear indication something was wrong with my brain. Something has been wrong with my brain. I needed hands-on help. You get that from family. But not if you come from families like mine. So, okay, sensory systems. For example, sound input overload can induce visual changes. My vision's, I can't believe how rapidly my vision is going. Uh, in color perception, it causes nystagmus. Nystagmus? Which I had to look up. And in looking up and reading it, um, it also unbelievable causes vertigo. Now, I've had vertigo. But I my balance and dizziness lately has been really bad. And this nystigmus, nystigmus um, causes balance problems, coordination problems. And I do have to wonder now if it's from the sound, from the noise, the chronic noise six days a week. It also says sound stimuli play a vital role in maintaining arousal of the brain and thereby influence the basic physiological functioning of the body. Sound may influence the body after cessation of the stimulus through reverberating neural circuits within lower and higher brain centers. In this way, sound can produce physiological reactions that develop a momentum of their own, independent of the original stimulus. I've been jacked up The first month was okay, but then it was getting to me and getting to me and getting to me, and I was like, all right, man, this has got to stop. And the steady noise would be better. It's kind of like the pulsating frequency. These intermittent pulses that you never know when they're going to come, you're not feeling it, but they're hitting your body, pulsating into your body. Every cell is affected. We'd be better off if the frequencies were not pulsating. This is pulsating frequency, a bad frequency, all of the sound. So you have the weed whacker, yeah, lawnmower, you know, it's like, and you never know when, you know, they're going to hit a rock or hit, you know, and, but it's not stopped. And, It's, this stress has really done a number. And the lack of care I see in people, whoa. That really makes it worse.
my complaint got me notice of eviction. Another neighbor complained and Holly said, well, what's the difference? It would be annoying if the company came. No. No. They knock it out in half a day. It's not even on your radar. Well, how could she possibly say that? Well, what the hell? Why not say it? Why not say it? <sighs> Did I say that the co-signer of the lease said that I was feeding the cats, not on the notice, never said anything to me, didn't say stop feeding the cats like she did another neighbor who she had told just before it's okay to feed the cats. Nothing makes sense here. And you never know. You know, they make their rules, they, it's arbitrary, who the hell cares? But the maintenance guys act as spies, they tell Holly, oh my god, what a sick place. But, um, completely forgot what I was going to say. So, you know, what I have been hearing and this is on top of tonight is the buzzing that I hear chronically, um, is at night, it sounds like in the faint, it's faint, it, it, like in the distance, somebody's doing lawn work, mowing the lawn or weed whacking. And I'll go out and I don't hear it. I come back in, I hear it. It's kind of like it's taken on a momentum of its own. The effects of noise quieting down could save billions in heart disease, noise pollution, often overlooked, source of environmental stress, raises the risk of serious health conditions including heart disease. It's estimated that one million people are exposed to unhealthy levels of noise, typically from automobiles, aircraft traffic, but leaf blowers, lawnmowers, loud music. It increases your risk of hearing loss, stress, sleep disturbances, heart disease, high blood pressure. Elevates stress hormones such as cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline, which over time can lead to high blood pressure stroke and heart failure. Stroke, great, great. Now I'm convinced that I've had many strokes. But does that frighten me? I don't have anybody. If anything happens, what the hell am I going to do? don't know. This is the position this fabulous family of mine put me in. Um, even as you become accustomed to noise, the adverse physiological changes are nevertheless taking place, which you're at risk for serious consequences to your health. It's a major stressor that can influence the endocrine, immune, and cardiovascular systems diminish productivity. I'm going to end with, there was a study done, it's in this article, you can click on the link, but the study was chronic traffic noise, and I don't know how many people were involved, but the out of the participant, participants, 58% experienced aggravated depression, 65% stress, 71% public conflict, 56% speech interference, 48% exhaustion, 69% hearing impairment, 93% concentration loss, 71% cardiovascular issues, 59% behavioral effects, 74% headaches, 55% low performance levels, 87% hypertension, 54% irritation and annoyance, That's a huge percentage. Noise is known as a stressor. But here, I don't care. I can always get more tenants.
I get this notice. The co-signer speaks to her. I'm evicted for feeding the cats, but she said I can stay. What? Now I can stay? Well, I didn't get that in writing. Now I can stay. So clearly, no legitimate eviction. Because they can't seem to just knock out a job. Four months they've been working in this apartment. First week, the exterminator comes three times in one week. They bombed the apartment too. I saw the condition of that apartment and it was disgusting. I knew when they start working on that, I'm going to have a roach problem. Now, if they just knocked that place out, I wouldn't have a roach problem for four months. I had the exterminator come here. Did it work? No. Because, oh, they came in like a half a day or a day banging around. When they do go back in, the roaches come in here. I sealed up all of the cracks that I could get to in the kitchen. Didn't work. The roach is still here. I, a neighbor gave me her home exterminating thing. I've exterminated so many times. This is not how I've ever lived. We're killing one another off. We don't need to leave. With this kind of behavior, I've never experienced such a lack of care and disrespect, boy, like I've been seeing. And if we can't get our shit together, yeah, we can't get ourselves into a condition of some, if something re that resembles a healthy adult. I don't like just watching destruction take place. Nothing changing. Everything getting worse. How many awake people are hopeless and well nothing's gonna change they actually say they're spiritually dead. They do nothing to awaken themselves. Okay, it may be hopeless. Why? Because so many good people are sitting around doing nothing. All right, but does that mean that you just give up, wait to die, so that you can live in heaven, in eternal bliss? How unbelievably self-centered in the extreme can you be? And do you think Jesus, if you were chosen, chosen you think Jesus is going to cho choose you? Spiritually dead? Filled with all of these issues? Hurting other people? Not caring? Lying? 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 Lying is an abomination. You do nothing. Nothing at all to correct any of that. You fling your issues about, you hurt other people, you don't give a shit, and you think you're going to be among the few who are chosen. Wow. Okay. At this point, considering what I've experienced personally that has gotten me in a worse position, now having to deal with this, something is very wrong with the American people. And for all those who have said, stop blaming the American people, clearly those who write that have been incapable of taking responsibility for their contribution to this nightmare because we have all contributed. And if you cannot face what you have done, if you can't face your own truth, you aren't even on the spiritual road. 
You can call yourself Christian. You can call yourself whatever it is. You can claim that you are, oh, it's a spiritual war, and I get it, and you're not even on the spiritual road yet. Oh, so you select what truth you're going to look at, the truth that's happening to us collectively, but you ignore the most important truth, yourself, the truth within yourself. You can't do that. Uh, for the Christians, I will say, Jesus is going to say, go, I never knew you. You, if you've not looked at yourself, understood your own contribution to this nightmare, connect the dots, because everything is connected. This manifested this nightmare because the American people are full of shit. If they were real, if they were actually adults, instead of adult children, this nightmare would have never manifested. If Christians were real, never manifested. You were 93% of the, 93% self-declared Christians in this country. Now you're 74%. You're still a huge majority. What the hell is wrong with the Christians then? Americans are full of shit. They love living a delusion about what they tell themselves. And it's a lie. And until they face that lie, they'll still be on the wrong side and creating more problems, deeper nightmare. It's upsetting, and I'm upset by it. I live the consequences, and it's not right. So, we fail to discuss the most important factors, parenting, childhood, consciousness, the work necessary to achieve a higher consciousness, our own personal unresolved issues from that childhood that so many just, because it doesn't threaten their life, they do nothing to clean themselves up. They never become their authentic self. They don't even know their own self. They lack an awareness of their own self, what they say, what they do. They have no awareness. They just can't get health from that. It's sad. uninspiring. Dead. I feel like I'm walking among the dead. The energy that people are putting out is so bad. And it's never going to change until they face their own self. And you know what? Most Americans, oh, they think they're big and bad, and they're the greatest on the planet, and they're superior, and they're not. They're weenies. They're little scared little children, little weenies, who have almost no courage, no backbone, nothing. Just let me live my comfortable life and don't ever change anything because that'll, uh, I don't know, it'll wreck my comfort. How many Christians are living in this satanic life? I mean, my God, there's so much wrong with the American people. Focusing on these psychopathic, malignant, narcissistic, elite people who are destroying us, they are never going to change. You've got to change. Bye. Ciao. Done.